in the sequence one three four seven each number beginning with the four is the sum of the two numbers before it this means that the next number in the sequence is four plus seven which is eleven the smallest number greater than one hundred that appears in the sequence is one three four seven so we got to add them together to get the next number so the next number would be four plus seven which is 11, and then 11 plus 7, which is 18, 18 plus 11, 29, 29 plus 18, 47, and so on. 47 plus 29, 76, 76 plus 47, 123. So this is the first number that is greater than 100, and therefore that is the answer. So number 11 would be E. The number 385 has three prime factors. The sum of these, five, these prime factors is so 385, if you break it up into its prime factors, would be, I believe, 5, then 77. So that'd be 7 times 11. So these are the, the three prime factors. And they're just asking you the sum of those numbers. So it'd be 5 plus 7 plus 11, and that is 23. So 23 is uh, D. Trapezoid ABCD can be divided into three equilateral triangles. If the perimeter of the trapezoid is equal to 840, what is the length of AB? So Three equilateral triangles, okay, so that basically means, let me see if I can do this, hmm, three equilateral triangles. Okay, I, 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 I just had a brain freeze there for a second. I, I think it's something like that approximately, I think, is what they're really trying to get at. So then, um, let's see here, perimeter is 840. So first let me just label this, since they're equilateral, all the sides would be the same. So I'll just call all the sides x. So it looks to me like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's 5 x's that would make up the perimeter. And they're saying that's the 840. So if you divide through by 5, we would get 84 times 2 with 168. So the length of a to b is really just x, which is 168. So I think that's it. Number 13 is c. A container of ice cream can be can make six cones or it can make four sundaes. If five such containers of ice cream are used to make 12 cones, what is the greatest number of sundaes that can be made with ice cream that remains? Okay, so we have six cones or four sundaes, right? So if I were to, uh, let's see here, I've got to extrapolate that, right? Because I've got this time five containers because this is a container. So one container is what produces this. So this time I've got five containers. So therefore, I've got to multiply that by five. So instead of six cones, it would be five times six, which is 30 cones. And then five times four, 20 Sundays. All right. So then what? What, is, uh, what do I do next here? Well, they're saying that you're taking and making 12 cones. So you're subtracting 12 yeah so you've got 18 cones left and then with these 18 cones they're saying the amount of ice cream that normally you use to make 18 cones how many sundays can you make ah, okay so we got to figure out a ratio here so cones to sundays was six to four right from this yeah so that means cones to sundays is a three to two ratio yeah so that means 18 cones over a certain number of Sundays, which is what I'm trying to figure out, has got to be that 3 to 2 ratio. So if you cross multiply, you get 3x is equal to 18. Sorry, 3x is equal to 36, and therefore x would be equal to 12. So 12 Sundays is the answer, and that would be C. When a positive integer a is uh, n is divided by 10, the remainder is 8. When n is divided by 5, the remainder is? Well, I, I think it's easiest to just to use an example. Something that's divided by 10 where the remainder is 8. Okay, I think 108 would satisfy that, right? Because if you take 108 and divide by 10, the answer would be 10 with a remainder of 8. I mean, that's usually not how you write it, but that's how I would write it. So then if I take the same n, and I divide by 5 this time, I will get, I, I think, 21 with a remainder of 3. And therefore, 
The answer is D. A block of wood in the shape of a rectangular prism has a length of 4, width 4, and height 7. Cylindrical hole with radius 1 is drilled through the center, as shown. To the nearest centimeter cubed, what is the volume of the block of wood after the hole is drilled? Okay, so the, the volume of the, the shape is going to be the full volume of the cylinder. Sorry, the full volume of the rectangular prism. So that's going to be 4 times 4 times 7. And then from that, subtract you uh, the, the cylinder that you drill out. And they've even been nice enough to give you the formula, pi r squared times height. And the radius, they've told me, is 1. So it's 1 squared. And the height is just the top to bottom, which is 7. And that is basically the, the answer. Okay, so let's do this. So this is 112, and this is, I believe, just 7 pi. And then take out your calculator, and when you do, you'll get about 90 approximately for that calculation. 7 times 3.14, which is whatever, about 21 or so. Okay, so therefore, number 16 is 8. The Gossbot factory assembles robots. Each robot comes in one of three colors, red, blue, or green. Each robot also has a number of stamped on its head, one, two, three, or four. The nth robot assembled in the first robot is the first robot to have the same color and the same number as previously assembled robot. What is the greatest possible value of n? The greatest possible value. Okay, so we have red, blue, and green, and then we have one, two, three, and four. So... For red, we, they, we want the greatest possible, so let's exhaust our possibilities. You could have R1, R2, R3, and R4. For same thing for B, B1, B2, B3, B4. For G, G1, G2, G3, and G4. Now, at this point, the very next robot will guaranteed be one of those 12 because you've exhausted all the possibilities. And that very next robot is the 13th robot. And therefore, number 17 is C. A circular spinner is divided into five equal sections. An arrow is attached to the center of the spinner and is positioned as shown. The arrow is spun clockwise and it stops in the section labeled D. Which of the following could have been the angle of rotation? Okay. All right, so let's think about this here. Uh, equal. So that means each of these have equal uh, positioning so the, full, uh, the whole way around is 360, right? And each of them is equal, so you have to divide by 5, and that would be 72. So this is 72 degrees. This is another 72 degrees, so that would be 144. This is another 72 degrees, so we're arriving at 216. And then this point is another 72 degrees, which is 288. Okay, so to arrive at D, which is this region here, we'd have to be between 216 and 288 degrees. But if you look at the answer choices... None of them are in that range. So that means they're talking about keep going another way around. See what I'm saying? So we know that D is somewhere between 216 and 288. Now, let's go around again. So if we go around again, we have to add 360 to each of these. So we went around once and we went around a second time. And when you add 360... That makes D between, what is it, 576 and 648. So which one of these is in that range? 576, 576 to 6, uh, this one right here, 630, I believe. Uh, yes, 630 would be between 576 and 648. So number 18, the answer is C. Three different integers in the list have a mean of 50 and a range of 14. What is the smallest possible integer in the list? So th whatever those are, I'll call them ABC, their, their mean is 50. So that means that their sum would be 150. Okay, And their range is uh, 14. So that means that if you list them from whatever smallest to biggest, that's the, the range from A to C is 14. So that basically means that mm, C minus 14 is equal to A, I believe. Yeah. Or C is equal to 
a plus 14, however you want to write it. So that means that if I substitute this into here, I would get um, a plus b plus a plus 14, and that's equal to 150, or 2a plus b is equal to 136. Okay, that is pretty much as much as far as I can go. And I want the smallest. So let's just go with the answer choices. Sometimes it's just easier to do that. So let's start with the smallest, which is 39. And let me just see if I can fit it all into here. If, uh, what is the smallest? So we're talking about A. If A is 39, let's see what happens. If A is 39, uh, let's see here. Using this equation, we would get B equal to 58. Okay, well, that, I don't think that's going to work here because then C would be, uh, well, C is A plus 14, so C is uh, 40, 53, but then C is now smaller than B, so this falls apart. So that doesn't work because B has to be less than C, right, according to this right here. Okay, so then let's try A equals 40. Let's keep going. When A is 40, B is 56. Right, that's this equation is used to calculate that, and C is 54. Again, this inequality does not hold true, so 40 falls apart. Let's try 41. A equals 41. If A equals 41, B is calculated to be 54, and C is calculated to be 55, and that works. So we don't have to keep going because they just want the smallest one. As long as we get the smallest one and it works, we're done. So. Number 19 is E. Kiran has a box containing three different types of fruit, apples, pears, and bananas. In the box, 21 pieces of fruit are not apples, 25 of the fruit are not pears, and 28 are not bananas. How many pieces of fruit are in the box? Okay, so we have A, P, and B representing apples, pears, and bananas. P plus B is 21 that are not apples. A plus B is 25, that are not pears, and A plus P is 28, which are not bananas. So if we add all these guys up, we get 2A plus 2B plus 2P is equal to 74. And if we divide through by 2, we get A plus B plus P is equal to 37. How many pieces of fruit are in the box is represented by A plus B plus P. And that is 37. So therefore, number 20, the answer is D.